on how do they do it. Mud, Joe, Go Juice, Jet Fuel. Whatever you call it, we can't get enough of it. Americans drink almost 150 billion cups of coffee per year. Get a load of this. That's the equivalent to Niagara Falls at full flow for three and a half hours. That's a lot of coffee. So when it comes to keeping the world awake, how do they do it? Brazil, the biggest coffee producing nation on earth. Bean counters confirm that around 35% of our coffee comes from here. It starts life as these flowers. Nine months later, the buds have matured into grape-sized berries. Harvesting them by hand is tiring work. So some of Brazil's 220,000 coffee farms have splurged on one of these. This 16-foot-high harvester can do the job of 100 humans without breaking a sweat. As the machine straddles a line of trees, a vibrating set of ribs hidden inside shakes the coffee berries from the branches. The story goes that coffee was discovered 1,000 years ago by an Ethiopian shepherd who noticed his goats were energized after they ate the beans. You can imagine when he milked them, he got an instant latte. Every year, 35 million tons of freshly harvested fruit arrive at mills like this one. The fairies are like Russian dolls. They need to remove several layers of useless stuff to get at the valuable beans inside. First, the skin and outer layers are taken care of by this pulping machine. It turns them into a gooey pulp called mucilage. Fermenting the pulp for 36 hours breaks down the mucilage, which is washed away, leaving the green beans surrounded by the pale seed skin called parchment. The next challenge is drying the beans. To do that, they're laid out in a one-inch thick carpet under the blazing Brazilian sun. All of it needs to be turned every half hour or so. And for that, they need a little horsepower. After nine days, the beans go into these barrel dryers to remove the last bit of excess moisture. Then they're bagged 130 pounds at a time. These sacks will end up as far away as Alaska and Azerbaijan. After oil, coffee is the most traded commodity in the world. Without coffee, the world would grind to a halt. Our story now takes us to Trieste, Italy, and one of the world's biggest coffee producers. 30 different varieties of beans arrive here from over 4,000 different plantations. The challenge is to create one coffee that tastes the same, cup after cup. So a crack taster squad makes brews using samples from different sacks. Then, like a quality wine taster, it's sip and spit, sip and spit, sip and spit, until they discover the best tasting ingredients for the blend. The most cups of coffee anyone's ever drunk in a day is 82. Don't try to break the record, because if you do, it might kill you, most likely from a heart attack. The blend recipe is then put into the system and correct quantities of beans are automatically sent out for roasting. Roasting is the science behind your coffee. Heating to 410 degrees Fahrenheit for around 12 minutes turns the starches in the bean into sugars and releases the aromatic caffeol that gives coffee its flavor. Roasting also starts to burn off the caffeine. The more it's roasted, the more caffeine is lost. You think it's going to be the dark roast that gives you the big caffeine hit. Actually, it's the opposite. The light roast packs the bigger punch. One bad bean could ruin your brew, so they are sent through this optical sorting machine. Fungi and bacteria like coffee as much as we do, and by bouncing light off the beans, the machine detects which ones the little microbes have been munching on. 
A series of hoppers then divides the beans into seven pound coffee shop batches, which are poured into big shiny tins. The biggest challenge for coffee makers is keeping their coffee fresh. It can lose 40% of its aroma within just eight hours of roasting. The solution is to suck out any oxygen, replace it with inert nitrogen, and then quickly seal the tin. By doing this, the coffee stays fresh for up to three years. Nitrogen is an unsung hero of the modern age. It gives us fresh bags of salad, crunchy crackers, and of course, coffee. So make mine a soy macchiato with stevia, please.